Welcome to this week's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. Each week, the In-Depth Outdoors staff will take you to North America's top ice fishing destination, where we'll fish longer, go further off the beaten path, uncover untapped fisheries in your backyard, and punch more holes in search of the biggest fish and the hottest bites. We'll share time-proven tips, introduce new lures and cutting-edge fish-catching techniques, We'll shine the spotlight on overlooked bodies of water and open eyes to underutilized species that feed aggressively and fight hard under the ice. All this with one goal in mind, to help you catch more fish and have more fun doing it. This is In-Depth Outdoors, brought to you by Lake Master, leading in accuracy, following with success. Markham High Power Ice Sonar, Snowsuit Performance Winterwear, engineered with you in mind. Otter Outdoors, get out onto the ice and into the outdoors. Custom Jigs and Spin, the hottest baits below the ice. Strike Master Ice Augers, introducing the Solo, the ultimate ice auger. Thorn Brothers, makers of premium quality custom rods for the ice angler. On this week's episode, we head to Upper Red Lake with In-Depth Outdoors pro staffer, Joel Nelson, and longtime fishing buddy, Johnny Petrowski. Upper Red Lake is a shallow lake that freezes early and is well known for its hot early ice walleye and trophy pike bite that often lasts well into January. So if you're looking for an early ice destination that consistently produces fast-paced walleye action, plus there's always a legitimate shot at a trophy northern pike, stick around. We're headed to Upper Red Lake at First Ice today on In-Depth Outdoors. This place, Red Lake, for me, is uh, it's a numbers bite. It's, it's a fun bite because the action is fairly consistent and continual. Um, it's true, you probably don't have as good a shot at uh, cracking a monster walleye here as you do in some of the other waters or surrounding waters in Minnesota. But in terms of general average size, consistency of the bite, um, this is my go-to pick, especially early ice, especially early ice. You know, this, this first ice fishing on Red Lake is just superb. Uh, you know, it's, of course, I think adds to what you're waiting all year to go ice fishing, and we are the first ice in the state. Uh, we normally freeze up a little bit ahead of Lake of the Woods, a long ways ahead of the metro region. Uh, and it, it's the first chance to get out and try out some of the new gear, uh, target some of these walleyes. Um, and of course these walleyes are just extremely aggressive. Uh, we're finding them in the six foot area, uh, which is great because now you're within walking distance to shore. Uh, a little bit safer too, of course. You know, first ice is spooky. But it's, it's, it's so simple. Come out here, drill a few holes in that six foot break. Uh, you know, get yourself some slender spoons or some little plastics and, and just start working that water column and watch the flashers and hop around a little bit until you find the pocket of fish and set up the otter and just hunker down for the evening and just have a great time, catch some fish, easy peasy. One of the things I see commonly with anglers that are fishing up Red Lake for the first time is that they come here with a fishing report, a depth to target, and they spend time just searching for that target depth as if the lake were a featureless mud bottom bowl. But nothing could be further from the truth. During the crappie boom, uh, that was a very common way of finding fish. But once Lake Master got up here and surveyed the lake, uh, there was a much better understanding that this lake was full of structure. And these are the types of pieces of structure that I'm talking about, these small little humps and bumps and rises throughout, throughout the bottom. This is what you might call a more traditional spot where you've got a big rock pile, several feet in terms of your changes of depth, but contrast that with a small little bump over here that's just one or two feet off bottom these are the types of areas that people should be targeting because they're getting less pressure, there's less attention, because people just aren't used to fishing these different scales of structure. Fish this lake the way it needs to be fished. Find those small pieces of structure. Use your Lake Master chip with your GPS handheld unit and go ahead and target these areas that you're going to have very little competition on. 
I guarantee you're gonna have one of the best walleye early ice trips you've ever been a part of. That's a, you want a hand on that thing? Uh, yes I do. Hey. Nice walleye. <laughs> Good fish. <laughs> nice walleye. Hooked really well. It's a beautiful fish. Sitting here eating lunch. <laughs> Out of nowhere comes a mark. Oh, it's a nice one. Ooh, that's a nice one. Oh, I liked it a lot better when I had the gloves on. <laughs> Will you assist me, guide? Yeah, I'll, I'll, here. You just eat your sandwich, I'll work <laughs> on this. I think, uh, you're the best. Oh yeah, boy, he just rocked that thing, wow. Thank you. I caught this. It's a nice fish. <laughs> One of the things I really love about fishing up a red lake, especially early ice, is how aggressive these fish are. A lot of times as wall anglers, I think we're taught to think finesse baits, smaller presentations, but it's, it's the exact opposite here. Uh, we're looking for baits that give out a lot of profile, a lot of flash, and these larger profile baits are the ones that are going to make our trips a lot more successful. One of the things you'll notice is the way that we're aggressively jigging these baits, these blades, put off a ton of vibration, and we're trying to garner a reaction type strike, trigger a strike. And obviously once you see the fish on your markham, you can slow down a little bit and uh, give it a more normal jigging motion as that fish draws near for the bite. So for anybody heading to Upper Red Lake to fish early ice, try and get out of that mindset of smaller profile. Think larger, think aggressive jigging motions, more flash, more vibration, and it's gonna help you put more fish on the ice. I tell you, it's we get some marks up high. I was gonna tie on a little rat zone and see what they were, but I can't. Uh, I can't get away from the walleyes on this bobber rig of all things. Long enough to get get it tied up. Oh, gee, that's a nice one. Oh, another another that 17-inch bracket walleye. I mean, look at that, just just pounding it. Oh, I tell you what, it's sure getting to be a good time. That is a nice fish. Nice color. Look at that, just beautiful fish. I mean, there's a good example of the comeback of the Upper Red Lake walleye right there. Beautiful, healthy, golden walleyes. And I'm gonna put him back and wait for him to do that 26 to 27 inch mark. All right, I'm gonna to try to get that rat so tight on now. Just barely mouthing it. All right, here we go. Boy, this thing is, this is an all train walleye. All train walleye. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. I'm right at 17 inch fish here. Uh, perfectly legal to keep. Uh, it's just under the protected slot. Very healthy, fat, real wide fish. Got him. Nice. Now that's what it's all about. Lots of fish, perfect size fish, actually a smaller fish. Yeah, it's a little guy. It's but I tell fun. you what, you know, actually, I, we just got done with the fisheries meeting and they recommend that we start keeping those 12, 13 inch fish. No kidding, huh? They said those are the ones that eat a lake out of house and home. Hmm. So I think we follow their suggestion and put them <laughs> in the bucket. Here. I have no problem with that. Here, you can get back out in the blade bait again. <laughs> nice. It's funny, the smallest fish we've caught came on the biggest bait we have. <laughs> I think that tells you a little bit of how aggressive they really are. I like it. Okay, Joel. Here. Work him. Work him. See him? Yep. See him right there? 
You got you got one of those darters on there. Oh, he's, he's coming for it. I think more fish than I can handle in here. Bamo! <laughs> I'm not a right-handed guy. Well, you're good. I'm. Oh. This is difficult for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your first day. Nice fish, nice fish. Nice fish. I think mine's got to go Think back. you liked it? Wow. <laughs> Boy, look at this. You just hammered it, too. I'm going to need a forceps. You got one? You know, I just kind of got set up here. And... You talk about a nice double. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, sir. Appreciate All it. All right. I wasn't really ready for him. I have a pretty good feeling. Oh, mine is just a smidge over 16. I think this one might be over. I don't know. We'll see. Let's get him measured. I'll hold the. There's that little line. Why? It... Oh, you have got. You know what your fish is? What? Your fish is shorter but fatter. Ah, nice. Put them in. Put them in the to be cooked. Love section. it. That's the to be cooked <laughs> section right there. <laughs> Hmm, very aggressive fish. Boy, come on, come on, come on. Do it, do it. <laughs> okay, now I got two fish. Man, I got one. Oh! Oh, <laughs> he came, he, he chased it about five feet up and hit it again. <laughs> I'm done, I'm limited. <laughs> I, I have to quit fishing, Joel. You better hurry up. Yeah, I don't think I can keep he, up. He dropped it, he went back down, I hit it. And he chased it about five feet up through the water column, smacked right below the ice. Oh, are you missing a minnow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet oh, I, I am. To measure him, he's perfect. This guy here, you know, I'm calling him small, but he's uh, 15 inches right on in the mark. John, you know, that's one thing I've always enjoyed about Upper Red Lake compared to some of the other area fisheries is that the average size just seems to be so much better. Uh, a lot of lakes guys are striving to catch uh, loads of 13, 14 inch fish and 15 is the smallest one we've caught today with fish upwards of 17 inches and a lot of years it's upwards of 20 inch fish. A lot of that is actually due to the, uh, well one, our forage base and the fisheries. You know, the fisheries department here has done a, just a phenomenal job of managing this lake. You know, we, before the crash, we were a 12, 13 inch walleye lake also. Okay. Uh, you know what, the, the genetic makeup of these fish you know, whatever the fish guys tell you that is, uh, along with our food base, these fish are just fat and they're healthy. And I, I'm, I'm guessing the slot limit has a lot to do with that too. Yes, that projected slot limit was dead on the money. You know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of questioning and a lot of debate over that, uh, you know, mainly from a lot of us guides. You know, we weren't real comfortable with that severe of a slot, but, sure. you know, years down the road, we are really happy with the results of it. Here he comes, here he comes. Man, I mean, once they see it, they're on it. They are on it, on it, on it. And we'll do a joint effort catch. There we go. How was that for a move, huh? <laughs> Look at that. Even these littler guys. Oh, I got another one right down there right now, too. Jeez, they are just pounding anything rattling down there in that murky water. Oh, yeah. You know, we still got that stained water. And it's a little bit, little bit churned up from freeze up. And I tell you what, if it don't rattle, you might as well not even be using it right now. Our right. little blade baits, you know what, that vibration is another great producer. Okay, I got another one down here. Let's see if I can talk him into playing too. I'm catching your limit. You better hurry up or we're gonna have to go home and you're not gonna get to catch any. <laughs> I already <laughs> caught one. Yeah, well I got the other ones. I love party fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Boy, they're aggressive. They are really, really aggressive. <laughs> Boy, they just pound it. Ooh. My, oh, My rod tangled up a little bit. Joel, I think I caught one that's a little bit bigger than yours now. Oh, really? Yeah, look at Oh, yeah. What's it go, about 18? I'm guessing about eight. Well, heck, I can measure them up here. We'll, we'll know. Seventeen and a half. Nice. Got to have them too, I guess. Oh yeah. Got to have them too. Ah, they are just 
pounding these rattling baits. Way to go. All right. Today we're gonna to target some big pike in Upper Red Lake. And we're gonna use two separate presentations. One, uh, one of my own rigs, a single hook rig that is used as a quick strike rig. Uh, the oversized kale hook, I believe it's the number 10 King Kale. We've got a big spitter and a sliding weight on a 120 pound fluorocarbon leader. There's no way they're chewing through that, ever. That's why using a live minnows allows them to flail around, tip, wobble, give a real good distress signal out there. You know, what I'm really concentrating on is this this ridge, this dorsal fin has got some real strong skin. Uh, it's great for keeping it hooked up. And what I want to do is make sure that this hook is pointing forward. Uh, being what happen when a pike attacks the bait, he's going to smash it from any direction he feels fit, but he is going to stop and line this bait up head first to eat it. So you want this hook so it gets into that good hard part of the roof of the mouth. What I just do, they just come underneath, get underneath those scales, real gentle, underneath that dorsal and spine, the big void there, bring it through. You know, you can see how it's going to lay there nice, it's pointed forward, and I always make sure that that tip is clear of any any scales. Anyways, uh, to put him up a little bit higher, see he's up about a foot and a half, almost two feet off the bottom there. Sure. Uh, basically because we're on his edge here. By putting that, that sucker middle higher in a water column, he's more visible from the top side of that bank. Our, predator fish traveling right under the ice as far as predator fish traveling in the bottom. Mm -hmm. When you really think about it, we're in 10 feet of water. That's half the length of your fishing boat. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you mean tell me that a, 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 a predator that has a burst speed of 40 miles an hour isn't going to go five feet to attack a bait? Right. So it, uh, I really like putting those up higher in the water column. It seems to be a lot better results. So John, the trap is set. We've got all our tip-ups out. What happens when the flag flies? Well. With tip ups, I guess. Let's take a look at this one here. Let's let's use this one. You know, your flag. Normally, your flag is tripped. Uh, on a lot of lakes, your approach can be running. I tend to walk up to them just mm -hmm. because that running across the ice is just going to flare that fish off. So of course, you come here, and as you can see, these little this T. You want to watch your T. That's really a secret to it. You want that T to be spinning. So when you approach it, if it stops, just wait. Because what's happened is if that T isn't spinning, that fish has stopped and he's repositioning that bait in his mouth. And if you pick it up, you're going to pull it out of his face and mm -hmm. he may just get discouraged and leave. So as that's spinning, you want to gently, very gently pick that up. And I just put my hand under it. Let it feed over my hand. I can feel what's going on. Mm -hmm. I set that like that. So now I'll grab that line and I'll just kind of feel. As soon as I feel the weight of that fish, I won't really give it a snap with this braided line. I'll just give it a long pull and really sink those hooks in. Sure, sure. You know, the pike have a really hard mouth and it takes a lot of force to get that in there. Then of course we'll fight the fish and, and do whatever we need to do to land it. But a nice thing about having this tip up this way is now if I need to feed line, right. I can feed line back. Comes out smoothly. I can really tell too when you clear the ice with that scoop how much that's going to help us in a situation like that, you know. In the past I've had line laying all over the place. It's it's like doing a figure eights like a boat cleat or something. <laughs> that's just what it does too. It cleats around these sharp edges of ice. And you know you're in the heat of battle, and it wraps up tight, and sure. some of that ice will cut through this this uh, mono, this western monofilament braid pretty quick. <laughs> so you're ready then. You get that walleye? Yeah, just got him. Uh, this guy here, he ran really hard. He stopped, and I don't know if he maybe a walleye had dropped it. Well, we'll give him a try here and see what. Yeah, see what's on the end. See what happens here. Oh, he must have doubled back. What a line he took. Wow. There he is. There he is. There he is. There he is. Ooh. 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 Oh, I think we got our pike. Yeah, nice save. Nice save. Oh, he's running. He's running. He wants more, huh? He's coming at me. <laughs> okay. You know, this is where these big two tackle rigs excel. I'm I'm pretty confident I got a good hook up on him, but he is not really happy about coming up out of this hole. Okay. 
Oh, you know what? Wait, wait. Got him. There's more. <laughs> there. <laughs> Upper Red Lake Pike. Joel, we worked hard all day for this fish. <laughs> we had right to go at sundown. We had to go through a lot of walleyes oh. to get to this boy. Folks, this is what Upper Red Lake is all about. We have spent the day today catching walleye after walleye after walleye. Uh, I'm a little excited. <laughs> but anyways, we run these tip-ups along with the walleye jigs, hoping for the pike of a lifetime, and here it is. I mean, how often do you catch a monster like this after a day of catching perfect eater-sized walleyes? We'll have you know, to tape them with the yardstick, oh, bud. And look at that quick strike, that big tooth tackle rig. It just absolutely pummeled it. Hook wasn't going anywhere on that fish. I'm gonna try and take some quick measurements on him, bud, yeah, all right? Let's just try to get a measurement this quick. They're real gentle, I don't wanna score them up. Okay? Hang on, hang on. No, not that close. All right, with a pinch, that's where he's at, to with that mark. right here is yep. 26 inches, okay? We don't have enough, okay, move that, move that up. The one again. There's one, and we're ending at 20. So 26 plus that's a 46 inch, that's a 46 <laughs> inch Upper Red Lake Pike. Oh my goodness. All right, but one thing about these big pike, they're very valuable. So, I want to get her back in the water. Okay, Joel, I want you to put your hand in there. <laughs> yeah, oh, not gonna happen. <laughs> All right, let's put her back. And do an incredible day, my friend. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh. We've got a ton of walleyes. And I will see you when you are 52. Whoa! <laughs> Slimy handshake! It's worth it, bud. I tell you what, folks, this is first ice on Upper Red Lake. This is what it's all about. You know, you want somewhere to go early season, you gotta come up here. We're catching walleyes one after the other. We're catching 46 inch trophy pike today. You know, I don't care how you get here. Just feel a car if you have to. Get up to Upper Red Lake and come up here and join us in this first ice fishing. It is phenomenal.